Hey everyone, Shobit here. In this video, we will be working out a sample example in which we will try to connect with the anti-granular server and work out with the APIs that it has to offer using a local environment. Moving on to the data set section, uh, we will be working with the adult population data set for this tutorial. So I have a notebook that was prepared for this tutorial and I'll be sharing the link for this as well so th that it would be easy for you to work on it along with this video. The first step is to do pip install anti-granular. This will install all the necessary requirements that are needed for anti-granular to run in your local environment and to be able to connect to the AG server. Once the installation is complete, we need to copy the login code snippet from adult dataset section. So let's copy the snippet and paste it. So a successful login will produce the following message saying the magic cell percentage percentage AG is registered successfully. This means that anything written inside percentage percentage AG will now run uh, in the anti-granular server rather than your local Jupyter server. Let's try to load the data set. So I have already written a code which loads the data set and I have just copied it from the loading data set section over here. The load data set is accessed from the AG utils library. So we will load the adult population data set using agutils.loadDataset method in which we get a response that is a dictionary containing keys trainx, trainy, and testx. It's important to know that trainx and trainy are private data frames whereas testx is a normal pandas data frame. This is mainly because testx is needed to be exported in your local environment for you to be able to locally test it. However, trainx and trainy are hidden from you so they are private data frames and they cannot be exported to your local environment so let's try it out so let's first try to export test x onto your local environment uh, we'll be exporting test x under the variable name test capital x and for that we are using agutils.export method So now the test underscore X is accessible in your local environment under the name test capital X. Similarly, uh, let's try out to export train X or train Y. Uh, train X and train Y are private data frames, so it sh should throw an error saying that you can only export non-private types. However, to be able to obtain information about uh, private data frames, you can totally use differentially private methods. So let's run a differentially private describe method uh, in which you'll be sending an epsilon parameter, which is the privacy budget. So let's run uh, trainx.describe with a 0.5 epsilon, and this will be sent to the variable called trainxinfo. So since trainx info is not a private data as we have applied differential privacy onto it, so we will be able to export it and load it into your local environment. To get a track of the privacy budget that you have spent so far, we can use a session.privacyautomator method. So the session.privacyautomator gives you the total epsilon delta that you have used so far. Currently, we have only dealt with epsilon, so we don't have to care about the delta now. So we can see that 0.5 epsilon has been used. So let's try out some more differentially private methods to see if it's reflecting any change on the privacy budget. So I've just executed a method of correlation with an epsilon equals to one. For submitting a prediction, uh, we would need to produce an output test y uh, and use the session.submitPredictions method. The submit predictions method will compare your result with the original test Y and give you the necessary metrics such as the accuracy and score, your leaderboard scores, etc. 
So let's execute it. Uh, for now, I'm just using a sample output test Y where every income is less than 50K. So let's execute it and that's it. Uh, I think we have now a fair idea of how you can interact with the APIs that Antigranula has to offer. You can also learn and try out some differentially private methods that can be applied to private data frames and private objects. To learn more about such methods, uh, let's go to Antigranula docs. So in the Antigranula docs, we have a private Python section where we have a quick start guide on private pandas. This quick start guide contains everything from object creation, viewing, cleaning, selecting data, different operations that you can do and the statistical methods that private pandas has to offer. So I'm sure this will give you the necessary head start to be able to work with private objects seamlessly. In the coming videos, we'll be covering individual libraries and coded examples for the same. So see you guys in the next video.